Many years ago, I bought this cheap Chinese CNC in the format 3018. There's a lot of builds today. Um, so this is the older version. Uh, and I have used it a lot to get some knowledge of how to work with CNC machines and get into the CNC world. The Z-axis is uh, 3D printed, as you can see here, and it works very well for smaller jobs. But uh, now I think it's time to upgrade the Z-axis and uh, also the spindle, so I get a, a bigger spindle motor with a better power. On AliExpress I found this kit, it's for a spindle 52mm in diameter and the name a 17 stable motor. I already have a spindle with a 52mm in diameter, it's a 400 watt and it has a better power than the motor that originally is with this kit. And I also bought the mounting kit for this CNC here, so I was sure that everything was fitting together. Here all is uh, mounted, and as you can see it's all metal, and it looks much better than the original parts that is uh, 3D printed. Here's the final result, where all the mounted parts and with the spindle mounted. And with this upgrade I want to do two things. First, I want to get a much better and stronger ZX, and then I also want to tweak the easiness of use when it comes to the tool change. Okay, now it's time to talk about semi-automated tool change. For this purpose, I need the end stops mounted, as you can see here. And uh, the reason is that I need to use the homing function much more than I have previously done. Before I start, tweak the gerbil settings, then let's test the homing, and as usual the homing starts with the z-axis, and then it takes the x and y, so it seems to be okay. But if you look up at the switch for the x-axis, up in the corner here, you can see that it didn't hit the, the switch. So we have to look into that in a moment. But first, let's try check the probing and see how the probing is set up as it is now. Uh, you see here in the top of the axle, I have my alligator clip with a little magnet. Um, and then I first here just manually go down to a height where I start the probing. So the probe starts here. And when it hits, it retracts and then it hits again with a slower feed rate and then it retracts to a height. So this seems to be okay. For now I'm using Kendall. Um, I found a later version here. I think it's a beta 1215B. Um, I think it's from 2022, but it has got some really cool updates. One of them is the floating windows here. It's uh, organized in blocks. So here I move around the user command and you can also have the console moved. And I also think it's a great idea that the console now can be it's in, in its own window. So this is my settings. It's much easier to have more information in the console than the older one. 1.7 version and the G code program line and the bottoms in the, in the middle and the spindle, all this is the same. No news here. Uh, only thing is that it is organized in blocks now. And you can also have override and height mat at the same time. Really good, I think. And one of the other thing that also has been improved as the user commands or the control of the user commands. Here you can go and create your, you can add, you can remove, and you can actually go and create your own icons. That is a PNG file. And you also have here like uh, the tool tips. You can put in tool tips yourself. And now I change the run position, say OK. And when I point to the user command, you can see it says run position. Um, so if I go back here, um, 
Yeah, so again, you can add your, your own user commands and you can, own, uh, you can add your own G code settings here. Uh, this is the ones I put in for the probe. Um, I will later explain what I have put in here and why. So, but all in all, I think um, it seems pretty fine, the, the new updates we have got here in, in Kindle. When we are in the software anyway, I think I will measure the height difference on the bed. Um, and for this purpose, I will use the height map function. So I think I will show you how it works. And the first thing we have to do is to open a GCO file. It can be whatever. Uh, we just need something to activate the height map um, window. And uh, you can see the create and open button are now available. So you click create and you get all the parameters you need to set up the height map. And one of the cool thing I think actually is in this version is you can set the feed rate yourself. Uh, in this case, I would set it to 20 and I would just leave my X and Y number of uh, measuring points to four and four. I would set my set top to one and set B to minus five, maybe too much, but it's okay. And then I would set the mesh to 20 times 20 uh, the mesh, you will see that later. Um, and then I can use the auto uh, bottom here. If I click the auto bottom, we we'll try just to say, okay, you have this G code. I expect that is what you want to measure. Um, this is useful when you do PCBs. In this case, I want to measure the whole bed. So I will have 120 to one side and 240 in all. I will just keep my Y as zero. So I have my zero point here. Um, and then I have the height that will also be the width of the bed or the Y. 140 will be enough. So here I have a representation of the bed and the size of the bed and where I want this measure point to be. So then I will set my um, zero, my uh, CNC, right now the CNC is working. I should have a movie with that as well, but I think you can imagine what is happening on the CNC. So I will just align the point here with my CNC bed, and then I'm actually ready to start the height measuring. And I just click the probe button down here. So it starts, and it starts going down the middle point I don't know why it starts with a start point, but it needs a start point. And from there, it goes to the lower left corner, always when it does measuring. And then it measures. It uses uh, the probe settings. So we'll just go very slow here. Um, and then we'll go to the next point. And then we'll measure this point. And what I'm doing manually here that you can't see is I am moving the touch plate myself. So the touch plate is moved to where the head is going or the, the bead is going. And you can also see the small, small uh, blue dots here. And these small uh, blue dots indicate where the measurement has been taking place. And you can also look in the height map you can see the numbers is popping up now in the below schema. And as soon as it has something to calculate from, it start putting the mesh. And this mesh is where I set in as 20 times 20. So now it finalized it. It did it, there. It did it in four minutes. Um, so this is actually uh, the numbers from my bed. And if you look at the, the schema in below here, you can see the difference is maybe a half a millimeter, something like that. Uh, it's not at all the same height at all, but the, I, I think actually it's pretty okay. And for woodworking, it doesn't matter. For PCBs, I will use the height map every time. Some background from this session to do this setup is uh, 
a little drawing here showing the mill there, the stock to cut, the pro bed fixed here, it's a touch plate that has been fixed to the mill bed. Um, we have the tool bit and we have a tool holder um, and then we have the common XY plane for the touch plate and the stock. We need an alignment plane that is the same every time. And, and the reason is that the tool bit will change, it will vary in the length every time we change the tool. So to accommodate that, um, we don't know the stock is 20 every time. So let's try set it up. Mounted on the bed now, I have here the touch plate. Uh, it's fixed and uh, I need some consistency meaning that I need to have a known start point every time I run my B code. So for this I'm using the homing, uh, since the homing should be consistent. Um, in that process I also use the probing, so I can set a fixed height and use this for a kind of safety height. Um, and as you can see here, the probing after it probes, it retracts to 25 millimeter. And also I set X and Y to zero. So now I have a known point. Now we have the known point. Um, and then I also want to have a fixed point for my stock. So what I try to achieve here is to say, okay, what is the offset to the starting point? And the starting point will be up in the left corner of my stock. So to achieve this, I need to figure out where is my location or offset here. Um, and as soon as I have my offset, I can calculate where it will start. Every time I've done homing, then I can just say, okay, I know where the stock is. And from there, I can just start with G code and do whatever I need to do with that. Let's try and make some G-code for our test here. I'm using Artcam, uh, an old software from 2008. Uh, it's okay, it works. I'm running Windows 11, so I get some pop-ups meanwhile or sometimes, but uh, nevertheless, it works. So I will start here, set my stock size 200 times 200, and then I will uh, draw a rectangle and um, just to make it simple. And then I can set the size here a little more precise. Actually, it doesn't matter, but I think I'll do it anyway. Um, and the position also, so I have some round numbers. So if I have to look into the G code, it's a little easier for me to recognize. Just push create and close. And now we have the drawing. So next step is to go to toolpath. And from here, I just want to have a toolpath that will follow um, the, the line here in the rectangle. I will go to finish dip on three millimeter. I will have my safety height to 25. And for this purpose here, I'll just take a tool. Doesn't matter which one it is. I just need a tool. I'll click select. Um, no ramming and auto optimizing. And then I'll go to the stock. And here it's a little more interesting because now I need to understand that I have to use my bottom as my zero. So I have to tweak this. I have my bottom offset should be zero. So I use my surface of the bed as a base point. Uh, however, I can change that. I can also go the other way, but well, then I need to calculate this offset every time. So much better to use the bottom because that will be the same again and again. Then I'll just give it a name here, um, call it something, and then I click the now button, meaning it will calculate. So next step, let's have a look with the simulator. Let's see what we have created. And here we see the tool pass. It has to run two times. That's okay. Uh, let's see the tool pass again. We can start it up here. 
Uh, we need to see this and that. Yep. And now we can see that it actually go to the lower left corner. And we have just figured out we need to use the upper left corner. So I need to set that instead here. And then OK. And then you see we have both paths now. Uh, we have to re uh, rerun the simulation. And first I have to recalculate with the new start point. And then we can see the simulation again here. And now you see the start point is up in the left corner. So now it's okay. So next thing we can do now is, um, yeah, okay. Let's see, yeah, yeah, seems to be okay. So let's save it. Um, let's save it to a file. And yeah, okay. Just use the name it has here, save. And then I think already I have the file here. Yep, yeah, I'll just overwrite it. Doesn't matter. And then we close this one, and that's actually what we need to do here. So we can close our cam. Let's use the file we just created to do some tests here. Uh, the first thing we do is open the file. Uh, and what you can see is I use the surface of the bed as a basic or as a common plane. Uh, so when I start it, I get a dialog box. And this dialog box is just telling that the M6 command has been reached in the G code. So the first thing it will do is it will go down and do some probing, figure out where is the tooltip. And then we will go into the tool path and run the tool path. And uh, as soon as it has finalized the tool path, it will of course end. And it will go back and it will stop in X and Y0. But because in this settings here, in the settings in Candle, we have told it to do a homing, it will do a homing. So let's do a quick simulate of tool change and then we'll run it again. And I just reset and press send. I get the M6 command again and then just say OK. And it will do exactly the same. It will try to figure out where is the tooltip. That's the first thing. And then it will go up and find the 00. zero. And from there, the G code is running again, going into the tool path, and it runs the tool path. And of course, if uh, uh, in, in many cases, it will probably be another file of a load instead of just push reset. But this is just for tests, so it's just to see how easy it is to use. And uh, Seems to be pretty okay. I'm, I'm happy with the setup. So let's take a look at the setup, what I did. In the settings here, we will go into the user command and we will find the probing. Uh, and the probe is set up with these G codes. G21 is millimeter, G91 is relative or incremental. 38.2 is the probing with a feed rate of 100. So when it reaches first time with 100, then it will raised one millimeter, go again with a feed rate of 10. And then when it reach the plate, it will raise to set 20. And then I set by G92, the X, Y, and Z coordinate in the work coordinate system. Uh, so the X and Y is in this case where I want to have my zero, zero on my stock so, and then I end this by set it back to G90, that is absolute coordinate system. So then we, let's go up and look into some other parameters here, use program start commands. And these commands here is for safety. So it's kind of resetting if something has been set with the last time we ran the G code and hasn't been set back. Um, Again, remember G21 is millimeter. We can also have use program in commands. In this case, I put in 
dollar h and that means homing so after the gco runs i will home and when i have the tool change command meaning when it hits m6 it will run the probing so that's exactly the same as we have i just showed before in your probe and down here you can set if you want to have that dialog you saw here with a command popping up or you can also pause the sender on the m6 command so I prefer the first one, so I just leave it here. Next step, let's go back to the CNC and see the next upgrade. The upgrade is a 90 degrees angle where I want to have my fixed 0, 0.0 for the stock. I find it. And at the same time, I can use because it's aluminium, I can use it also for my probing. So here I probe from the homing, the home zero zero. So I need to find the offset to the 0, 0.0 for the stock. So I have to move the tool so it will point down to 0, 0.0 here. Uh, I try to hit close, that's fine. So I can set it up and test it. And then I write down the numbers and then after I have been written with numbers, I will go into the software again, into Candle. And here I can see where the work coordinate is now. It's minus 3.1 in X and 8.5 in Y. So I have to set this into the probe, but also in the tool change section. So I will start in the tool change section here and put in X and I will put in Y. And the same goes for the probe. So I need to go to the probe and do the same setting here. X 3.1 and Y is 8.5. And now I can just push Okay, and move on to the next step. And the next step here will be to check it on a stock. I will still not run the spindle. So I just test that it will go to the 0, 0.0 for the XY on the stock first, and then go in over the stock and just run the same simulation as we created earlier in the video. So the first thing again, probes, and then it goes to 0, 0.0, the corner of the left corner, and then it goes into the stock, and then it starts the two pass and runs the two pass. And if you remember from before, it has to run it twice. So after it has run. G code finish, I go to 0, 0 and the end command in candle is that it has to go to home and when it is in home we are kind of ready to put in a new stock or a new G code for the next job. Another thing we want to do is uh, look into the alligator clip here with the magnet. It's a uh, okay solution, but I want to change it. So I come up with this idea. It's uh, just the gravity that keeps it down, but it just run on the top of the axle of the spindle. But the whole idea is that I don't have to put on and off the alligator clip again and again with the magnet. So to make it a little easy for myself, I know it might look a little Klondike, but it actually works. So here the probing is testing that uh, connection and it seems to work fine. So I'm actually happy with the solution and uh, yeah, that's it. So now I test it with some RPMs, I will see what happens when the motor starts spinning and now we spin it up in a full RPM and it seems that it works okay 
So I don't think that it would influence any kind of the shaft here on the spindle. So I will test that on some work pieces later and see how it goes. So, okay, then I move to my workshop with the CNC. And uh, before I actually start milling anything here, especially wood, I have bought this uh, little dust shoe here, especially for spindles with 52 millimeter in diameter. Uh, I found it on Amazon. Um, and uh, actually, uh, this is number two I got. The first one was damaged. So I wrote to the company and just a couple of days after they have sent a new one. So that was a good service. That's for sure. So let's try mount it. Uh, it should be straightforward. There are some Allen screws here on the side. Um, and then just click it on place. It should be... Uh, okay, I know what is wrong. It has to be twisted. Now it fits. Um, I would rather have had that the hose should be on the side of the spindle here, not in the front. And it's more like, because when you do the tool change, it's easier to come to the tool holder. So, but maybe if I just put a little aside like this, it could be okay. So at least that is what I will go for in the first place. Um, so let's tie it down and say, that's why it has to sit. And as you can see here, you have a middle piece and then you have the dust shoe or what we call it, the lower piece, the bottom. And you just click it on, it's a little magnet, so it's actually pretty easy to use. So seems to be a good solution. And here you can see it from another side. Um, it looks okay. So I'm actually looking forward to, to test it and see how it works. So next step must be to find a hose that will actually fit to the hose uh, connection. And as you can see here, it uh, is pretty okay taking on and off, probably because it is near at the side of the bed. I am looking forward to test this a little closer. And uh, that will probably be here in one of the next days. But uh, thank you for watching and I hope you got a little inspired. Have a nice day.